All right, let's have an overview of how does things look like a little quick hands-on okay so first of all let's have a look at the web interface so all of you have the login password for the cloud labs right under the installation document you can see the login password There you will see the Ambari. Ambari is essentially an interface using which you manage your whole cluster. Okay, it shows you the whole statistics, the, the all of the statistics about your cluster. We have disk uses, which shows and these. Other than this, what is important is you have name node secondary name node and data nodes all right also please notice that using ambari you can install newer host very very easily you bought a new computer all you need to do is you go here and say add new host give their ip after set after um, and provide the ssh private key and that's all All right. So it does a lot of things for you. Basically, it helps you provisioning anything. At the same time, it also shows you what is running on each node. So I clicked on, we have four servers. If you go into host, you will see that there are four servers right now. The Hadoop one is running H base, Hive, Hive server, MySQL, name node, resource manager. Resource manager is job tracker, okay? Resource manager. And there is something called Webcat. We don't need it now. There is, we also are running a data node here. That is something you will find strange. We have name node as well as data node on the same machine. Generally, it's a little bad practice, but we are becoming, a, we, we are a being a little greedy. We want to utilize the hard disk space of Hadoop 1 also. Okay. Now, Hadoop 2 will have these all services. You can see here, secondary name node is down. We can turn it on easily like this. Okay. And we have um, these region server here. Node, node manager is task tracker okay node manager is task tracker which is part of yarn okay other than that we have these clients so you may not see the start the these the, these controls because you might be having the you don't have the admin privileges on ambari okay so we are using hortonworks uh, hortonworks uh, package not the cloud era one because we i i prefer personally the ambari uh, ambari way of provisioning the systems the next is that in case you want to operate or execute something over the cluster you do this go to hue Hue is running at 8000 8, port. This is running at 8080 8, port. Login password is same. So you can see this here. This is the HDFS. Okay. Before, before operating upon it, please create your own separate folder. Do not fiddle with other folders. Why I have kept everybody in the same folder, same uh, login, because that way anything I'm doing, a sample data is very, very easier to share. Okay, so this is HDFS. So you can operate upon HDFS from the browser and I will also show how to operate upon this, uh, this uh, HDFS from the command line. All right. So you can create a folder or you can upload a file. You can upload a file from here. 
okay so it will directly go into hdfs these are the files existing already on the hdfs in case you want to see the file you can simply click on a file and here will be the data sounds good to you next is in case you want to operate upon other services such as pig but again I, I like to remind you that create your own separate folder before your data get mixed up with other users all right so here you can operate upon various services and also see what are the jobs running on the cluster right now there is not much of a jobs running here all right okay the other is in case you are on windows please use putty to directly log on to any of our servers or if you are on 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 linux or unix machines you can simply do ssh okay and then provide the password also on windows on on our linux machine you can use scp on windows machine you will have to install win scp okay So Vikas question is that does Amazon also provide Hadoop like S3? They they have their whole own installation of Amazon Elastic Cloud. Okay, they call it Amazon MR. You can utilize that. So yeah, are you going to explain this dashboard a little detail later on? No, I I think I should explain right now. So here we have HDFS. If you want to operate, uh, see the statistics of a Hadoop distributed file system. And yeah, that's correct. It's Elastic MapReduce. Thank you, Goel. And this is Yarn. It shows what all services are up. In case you want to add a service or in case you want to add a host, you can use this. Okay. As and when we are going ahead, we when we are attempting each individual components, we will go through this again and again. Yes, you can right away start using it. All right. And yeah, so let's let me open the the terminal. In case you are on Windows, you will have to use Putty. You can download Putty and run it, and so you say ssh student at hadoop fun dot no big data no big data so as soon as we log in we will be in hadoop one dot no big data and when we say ls it will be the local file system it is not hdfs this is when we say ls it's a local file system of this Hadoop one machine okay it's not HDFS so how do you access so let me just go to my folder and whenever you're working anywhere create your own folder without getting mixed up at a, a, with any anybody else's data okay so let's have a look at a file called here rating.csv and say we want to see what is there in hdfs okay so we can from command line we can say hadoop fs minus ls and it will show us all the files that are there in hadoop okay you can see or should i increase the font all right so you use hadoop command hadoop command hadoop command to access the hadoop cluster if you say hadoop fs you access the file system
so say yeah that is in the installation document you go to no big data my courses so which locate are we talking uh, vikas you mean to say locate this one right we have not we have uh, avoided installing locate on these machines because it does locate is quite a intensive uh, uh, command it keeps on creating the database continuously that is why we have avoided it but what is the objective you are trying to do yeah we can do the same thing using find command so if you if you help me out so here if you go into your course under installation instruction and under this this particular document you will find the lo login password okay I'm not opening it because I do not want to show it in this recording. Okay. All right. So Hadoop command is the one which helps us interact with the interact with the file system. So let's say we want to upload something. Let's create a file. Let me create a file. I'll use uh, nano and I'll say my file 18 April. Okay. And so this is a simple file. And let's see if it gets uploaded. Okay. So we say Hadoop, Hadoop FS, copy from local. I created a simple file locally locally as in on Hadoop one copy from local okay and then I specify my file and then put it in a folder called sgiri now let's check does it exist does it exist in my folder let me go to my folder and my folder may be on another yeah as it is here yeah we can use cat instead of nano definitely we can say okay so student and as okay yeah you can have a look at it right now there are too many folders in my in, in my folder too many files in my folder so yeah here i'm there is no file called my my file mnopqr here yeah there is no file here so let me just upload it so it's copying my local file which i just created for you there okay now let me just refresh it so it has been uploaded into hdfs okay so where is my file 18 april so you can see this is a simple file that's what i've written now if you want to download this file you can say copy to local copy to local and provide the file name all right also here the other thing i would like to do here is uh, where is my first slide so if you want to find out where all the files related to our data exist we can say things like this all right so or, or let me just give uh, my file my what was the name of the file which we just created it is my file 18 april right so so you can see that when i say hdfs fsck 
So there is another command called HDFS. HDFS provides you the direct interaction or admin, uh, the admin utility is on top of HDFS. Okay. So yeah, you can do on the same node as well, Vikas. No worries, right? And any f when you are copying things like HDFS, Hadoop, no matter from which machine you do, whether Hadoop 1, Hadoop 2, Hadoop 3, it is going to give you the same result because it's interacting to the same name node and it's interacting to the same data nodes. All right. So now it will show you which all machines does our uh, this particular file exists. Let's have a look at what's going on here. Okay, so it says here from here to here. So it says connecting to name node, as you can see, connecting to name node, which is running on this port. Okay, and this FSCK file check was started by the student from this machine. for this particular file at this time. And this file contains 24 bytes and there is only one block. And what does the metadata look like? It shows you this is the name of the block from here. Length is 24, replication factor is three, and these are the data node where it exists. So, on, on this data node 107, uh, 170, 92, 232, these are the IP addresses of Hadoop 1, Hadoop 2, Hadoop 3, and, and to 201. See this? Uh, these are the IP addresses on which these copies of the data are existing. All right? And here it shows that what is the status of, of our uh, file. Okay? If you want to increase, if you want to increase the the replication factor of this file, so we can say Hadoop FS set replication factor equals four. Now you can see that replication factor has been set for this file as four, and now it should have four copies, all right? Now you can see that these are four, four data nodes containing our data. Sounds good to you? One, two, three, and four, okay? Now you can see the replication factor is four. Sounds good? So I'm just uh, making a co copy of whatever I have done here so that you can, you, you can also try to execute the same things. All right. So always uh, here we what we have done is I think time is up for today. Okay, some of you might have to rush somewhere else. So it's better that we stop here. Now here have a look at this. So what we did was we first copied this file from local to HDFS inside my SGIRI folder. After that we checked the status of every block and after that we increased the replication to four and after that we did this okay now let's see what happens in case we want to increase the replication factor to five okay now it will it will show you that it, it is it will give an error that it is not able to do so. 
So the replication factor will remain as four. It will. So here you can see that under replicated. Okay, target replica is five, but we have found only four replicas. Okay, and it says that it's only having four. This okay. Default replication factor is still three, the the one which is set by there, but we have changed it, and right now we have only one rack. Yeah, you should not be executing such commands. Okay, it has let let you execute, but it has not set the replication factor. It it has not taken into consideration. They have told you that this is something which is which is not being done. Okay, the moment you add more nodes, it will create replicas for you. Okay. No, no, you can set any number of times. Now let's say we want to go back to two. You can set it as two. All right, now it will become two. So what is the use of it? Can somebody answer it? All right, let me answer it. So of course there is a big use of use of changing the replication factor. What is the use of? You can change the replication factor as many times as possible. If you have more nodes, if you need more blocks, if you need more copies, then set more replication. If you don't want more replication, then set it less replication. So it gives you the complete one. And with respect to uh, the question your question is what's the point of letting you set replication factors 5 when there is only place for 3 right because it's not possible right away to predict there is a place or not okay all right it's not possible for it to predict immediately that the, the target replication factor is possible or not so it takes it, it notes it down that target replication factor is this much. If it is not able to achieve, it will tell you upfront that we are not able to achieve it. All right. All right, now I think we will take uh, everything else on the next session. Nothing to worry. Please finish all the quizzes which are available on the uh, here. So. Okay, on the on the instructlet here. So please finish this quiz, and session two's assignment we will uh, talk uh, in the next session. Now you can take the quiz as many times as possible. Okay, we'll have all the records how many times you have taken and which one is your best score. All right.